Okay, I said I was going to find the old albums that my father had around the house. He must have bought these records in the maybe late 50s, early 60s. And let's start with the one that I mentioned on the latest Blogging Heads. And that's, it turns out the title of the album is You're My Thrill by Artie Wayne. Now you can see Artie Wayne in the background over here, but in the foreground, this is Anita Ekberg. She is not making any of the music on the album. It's simply an album that is presented as being sung for Anita Ekberg. And here you can see Artie Wayne. He's on the back. And I think one look at him and, and you can see why. The liner notes say, gorgeous, sultry Anita Ekberg, a great admirer of Artie Wayne whose voice to her is as exciting as it is provocative. Okay, but Artie Wayne is not exciting us, and so therefore we are seeing beautiful Anita Ekberg on the cover. And the point of this is to say that, you know, Madonna wasn't the first person to look sultry on the cover of an album, and that in fact this was being done back in my father's day. Do you recognize this woman who seems to have silver hair in the picture? on FDR Records, Full Dynamic Range, not Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Moments to Remember. This is, can you see the print down here? Exclusive portrait of lovely Jane Mansfield. She's not making any of the music on the album. She's just being on the cover. And if you wanna see more of Jane, here she is. Look at that picture. I remember looking at that when I was a kid. Women did not look like that. Only Jane Mansfield looked like that. You see, it probably doesn't look that abnormal by today's standards, but by those days, those pre-breast uh, enlargement days, uh, that was seen as just beyond belief. An Evening with Jane, music performed, not by Jane, of course, by Kurt Jensen. And so there you can see on the back, we don't even get to see anything about what Kurt Jensen actually looked like. Now, my father's favorite was the beautiful Julie London. Here's Julie is her name. You can see she's wearing a tight sweater. You can see the nipple there. That must have meant a lot, a lot to people in those days. And the thing about Julie London is she did do the singing, and she was pretty darn good, in fact. Singing Blue Moon, a song my father loved on, on this album, and, and many other songs, like Little White Lies, Goody Goody. Here's another album of hers. You can see it's well worn. And we see more of her, more of her, if you're interested in seeing her without the sweater, here she is, but she's not naked. We can see from the little uh, bit of black here at the bottom that she is in fact uh, still wearing clothing. And you can see this album is beat up, Cry Me a River. That was one of her best songs. And here she is, she wants you to call your number please, music, uh, uh, and arranged and conducted by Andre Previn, who you know married uh, Mia Farrow. And Sunyi Previn is uh, the daughter of, no, is she the daughter? I think adopted daughter of uh, Andre Previn. And so here we see this. Uh, she, so Julie, uh, there she is on that. And this is an album that just fascinated me when I was a kid. I really didn't understand what this meant to um, adults because it seemed sort of to appeal to children. Here she had an outfit for every day of the calendar. Right. I was born in January, so I wanted the January outfit to be better, but I really thought there was something special about the February outfit. Here she is in March. You see she's doing spring cleaning with the uh, feather duster in her negligee, and of course, talking on the phone, because you wouldn't want to just clean. You have to talk on the phone. Here she is in April with her umbrella, April showers, May flowers, June wedding. You know, every month has a meaning. Uh, this probably shaped my idea of what the months mean for my entire life. Of course, here she is with a giant uh, July phallic symbol representing our country. August, let's just go to the beach and point at your head because I don't know what I'm doing here. Caught in a net, apparently. Uh, and and uh, here she is in September catching her, uh, not really being able to fish very well, but I guess uh, one goes fishing in September, perhaps. I would have thought back to school, but apparently fishing. October, of course, is the Halloween outfit. Uh, her, uh, she's willing to go out with a rather unattractive guy, a stubby, pumpkin-headed man. Thanksgiving, what are you really going to say? Uh, they just got this idea of posing her on a 
a little whatever it is draped with a <laughs> satin sheet uh, with a turkey on it. But if you look closely, check it out, see those sleeves? That's her pilgrim attire. And then of course here she is in December in a sort of a fur-lined uh, bikini. You can see she's very slim, you can see her ribs. Now, let's see, uh, then we got a bunch of dance records. Dance Be Happy, they love to dance. Johnny Long plays for the Saturday Night Dance Day. Cha Cha Charm, Dancing at the Waldorf. Wow, lush and mellow. Then we'll be dancing in the dark, and if we get you back to the apartment, We'll put on the mood music by Paul Weston. I don't know who Paul Weston is, but you can see how the clothing is starting to just drift right off the woman because of the mood music. And then we'll have dream time and she'll be wandering around almost naked. <coughs> the next day, will you call her? I don't know. She looks a little sad about this. I don't know who that is supposed to be. She may be talking to her parakeet Parakeets were big back then. I don't know who that woman is supposed to be. Then, of course, there was the Hawaiian phase, and it's the only album that has a completely nude woman on the cover, but you can't really see much of her. Andre Castellanos, that was the emblematic um, mood music of the day. And then um, this one fascinated me. I put this one up because um, $64,000 jazz, it's trading on the popularity of the a $64,000 question television show, but you can, and uh, whoever the star was on that show, and look how excited these people are to be able to watch a quiz show on TV. And it's the music of, you know, look, uh, Benny Goodman, Louis Armstrong, Eddie Condon, Harry James, uh, Dave Brubeck, that sort of thing. And then I uh, like this one too, which was a Hollywood rhythm. Notice how we talk about how women are super thin today, but look at how thin that woman is. It's just astounding. I mean, uh, that's really just the thinnest uh, woman I've, uh, I've seen. Look at the style on that. Uh, did you know? Did you know it went that far? It was that extreme back then? Almost looks like she's voguing Madonna style. And I have one more I want to show you, and, I, and it's just because it's always puzzled me more than anything else. Are you ready for this? This one, don't, don't be alarmed, but uh, it's really a puzzling. The gay music of the Blue Danube, you know, and of course it's all waltzes, so of course, uh, you know, uh, the gay music, uh, but it's two women looking at each other, and this woman is dressed in more um, masculine clothes, so uh, were they really possibly actually portraying those women as lesbians? I don't know, but if there are any lesbians out there who would like this album, uh, maybe I should uh, put it on eBay because, um, isn't it uh, striking? Anyway, that's my uh, father's record collection, and that's all there is. There are more, but those are the ones I thought were the most amusing. So that's, that's it for this video.